Welcome. We're taking exams today in my school, and I just decided to, uh, I wrote some things up there for my students, and I was like, you know what, probably some other people might benefit from this. And to kind of give you a little background, I mean, obviously I went through uh, high school and took as many math classes as everybody else, and then obviously I got my mathematics degree in college, so I've taken a lot, a lot of math tests, especially, you know, the multiple choice ones. And uh, my semester exam was a multiple choice exam, and I just decided, you know what, let me kind of go through some tips that have helped me out through my multiple math exams that I've taken. And it's not really on multiple choice, but it's really kind of more on time management. So uh, on my exam, we uh, estimated roughly around four minutes per question, all right? And there was only 25 questions. Um, so, but it's very important because some problems, you know, are going to take a little bit quicker and some are going to take a little bit longer. So you got to just be able to kind of understand that you roughly you have about a four minutes of an estimate per question. And that's kind of important to make sure that you know that you need to make sure you're moving forward. Don't be spending so much time on so many problems. Know that you got to keep on moving forward. But I think the most important skill that I've taken is when I'm working through a test, I don't start at one. I don't do number one, then do number two, then do number three. I don't know where that's kind of come through, how we got ingrained to that system, but it's one thing that we really got to make sure we do not do. I still start with question number one, and I work my way through 25, but I only do question, I only do the problems that I rank as easy, or ones that I know I am the most confident. I know exactly the answer, I know exactly what to do. So as I'm working through the test, I rank the question as a one, two, and three, whereas a one will be an easy problem, a one that I'm confident in doing. Uh, two would be kind of medium. I know what I'm doing, but it might take a little bit of work or I kind of have, you know, some questions on it. I gotta, just got to make sure I'm comfortable. And then three are going to be the hard, the ones that I either have no idea what I'm doing, I know uh, what, what process I need to do, but it's going to take a little bit more thinking or a little bit more time. So as I'm working through the test, I, as I go to question number one, if it's, a, if it's an easy problem, it's a one then I do it. If I, worked in, if I go to number two and it's a one, then I go ahead and complete it. Um, but if I get to the next one, like number two, and I say this is a really hard problem, I just skip it. And I keep on going down and labeling every single question a one, two, and three. All of the ones, I complete first. Then once I've completed the test for all the ones, I go back and I answer all the medium questions next. So I just go and look at all my twos, I go down and I answer all of my twos. And then last but not least, I go ahead and do my last, my th uh, the hard questions, the, the threes. And this is important to do for a couple reasons. I think one, for doing the easy problems first, one, you start building confidence and in your brain, you start remembering some of the things that you've been learning and you actually go through the problem. Um, so that helps you kind of find further questions. Two, it's not as mentally draining doing the problems that you're most confident in. So, uh, you know, I've taken tests where I've worked on a problem for like, you know, five, 10 minutes and my brain just already starts to hurt. And then I still have the whole rest of the test still to take. So I think it's important to kind of start off on ones that, you know, boost some confidence as well as you don't drain your mental power. And then last but not least, um, you know, when you're working on those last problems, if you only have, you know, a couple minutes left and it's a multiple choice test and you don't have time to finish it, it's much better to guess on the problems that are the most difficult rather than guessing on the problems, you know, rather than saying, oh, I couldn't do 20 through 25, let me just go and fill those in. Whereas, what if 21 through 24 were easy problems, you just didn't have time to solve them. So, I think it's much better, uh, especially on a multiple choice test, to be able to leave those problems at the end. So, therefore, if you do, or leave the threes at the end, just in case if you do have to, um, you know, fill them in, you have much, it's much better to have completed the problems you already know how to do. And then that, last but not least, is always check your work. So if I have enough time, I think one of the main things that I found is every single time I took a test, I always found at least one or two mistakes that I would make. And you've got to remember, multiple choice questions have those um, distractors in there, have those questions that are designed for you making those little minor mistakes. So, you know, even though you might have done the problem, you're like, oh, yep, that's the answer. And then if you go back to it, you might say, oh, my God, I just made a minor mistake, and the answer was still in there. So I think every single test, I always found a couple of those mistakes. So I think it's really important just to go back there and just to remind yourself, okay, you know, what, com what mistake might I have made? And just make sure that you don't make those mistakes. And again, I always found at least a couple of them um, when I would go back and verify my uh, tests. And the other thing too is when you go back to a problem, you're like, you know, after you've completed the test, your brain has gone through so much information you might go back to a problem and be like, oh, I did that wrong. That's not the process I need to do. I thought that's what I need to do. But now that I've kind of my brain has gone through all this information, now I remember exactly what I need to do. That was wrong. So then you can go ahead and rework the problem. 
So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Um, hopefully your exam is not passed, or maybe for our next upcoming exam, uh, you can kind of prepare a little bit different and make sure you work your exam in a little bit different manner to hope you do a little bit better. Thanks so much.